bring in Jake Brewer, engagement director for the Sunlight Foundation, Ryan Grimm, senior congressional correspondent for the Huffington Post. Ryan, uh, how common is this? Oh, it's it's completely common. This thing happens all the time. It's unusual for them to be busted so red-handed. And if members of Congress are capable of embarrassment or of shame, then they should feel it in this case. I mean, it's just embarrassing to have your talking points laid out in the paper and on TV and shown that they're the same as uh, several others. The Times said more than 40 others, and, and we're, we're going to keep looking through the congressional record for these. We're going to find the, find but, but the members of Congress second, who but, did this. But what's so wrong about a particular special interest drafting? To, let's, let's say the banks have a special interest, let's say, or the healthcare countries or an energy company or military company or anybody has a particular special interest that they believe a government accommodation would help further their economic enterprise so that they can make more money. Yeah, what is, what's so wrong about them drafting the talking points for our politicians and then having our politicians simply implement, uh, excuse me, excuse me, implement that which been, has been drafted for them? What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them doing the lobbying itself. That, that's fine. They have an interest that they're pushing. This, this Swiss pharmaceutical does. But why not let but, them just write the bill and draft the talking points and be done with right. it? What's wrong? with that. that that would be better because then the american people could choose do we want the bill that's drafted by the pharmaceutical companies or do we want a different bill right now there, there's deception going on where these members of congress are implying that they have their own thoughts and that they're representing their constituents uh, and that uh b by representing their constituents they think this is the best idea which is nonsense this is what they were told to say specifically word for word by the pharmaceutical companies if they just come out and say that you know, I am the representative of this pharmaceutical company, and this is what that company wants, then fine, then people can decide, is that what we want or not? Yeah, and that, that's, that I think is the key point, Jake, which is why we've invited you here. It's one thing if our politicians come out and say, listen, this is a bill drafted by the drug companies that we would really like to pass, or this is a bill drafted by the right. banks that we would really like to pass. Here's why. They don't do that, as, as, as Ryan so appropriately pointed out. What are you doing, and what can the rest of us do in the press and elsewhere to close the gap between the reality and the, and, and the fantasy that's presented by politicians when it comes to legislation in this country. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, to say that something like this is not nefarious is, is just ridiculous. I mean, this is the kind of underhanded tactic that Jack Abramoff used to pull and, and, and got Congressman Bob Ney indicted several years ago. And so, it, look, the American people have the right to unmanipulated, unbiased information about the members of Congress that they've Says sent up who? there to, Says to who? make where is that decisions. Right? Where, but where is that right drafted? Good question. Well, that's what we need to demand as the American public, and so that's what we, that the Sunlight Foundation we're trying to do. We want access to this information. We want it online. We want it close to real time. This, you know, this this vote has already happened. Uh, we need to be able to make decisions about votes before they happen, be while the debate is actually going on. Uh, and so we need members of Congress to. To, to make decisions based on the information that, that should be there in real time. But I, I don't see, we're, I, we're in other words, if, if, if a particular group, in this case the drug companies, has an emphatic special interest in making sure that a piece of legislation works to protect a particular aspect of their business, what is so wrong with them hiring lobbyists to draft legislation and insert talking points in front of politicians to make sure that their special interest is accommodated? What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, Dylan, do you have access to going up on the hill and getting uh, getting language inserted into a bill? No, I mean I, you know an awful lot of people. I I, 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 I don't, don't think I you'd don't, be able to pull I don't it think off. I have enough money, but but they do. <laughs> but they do have enough money, and the thing is, we don't know how much money they're giving right now. We don't know how much uh, is being influenced by the by the companies that are putting their their bundling lobbyists. Um, contributions together. It's not just one lobbyist or a group of lobbyists. It's the companies and the lobbyists together. They're putting it all in these large bundles and they're getting that, that influence to have one big impact all at once. And they're doing things uh, that they just... That, they're putting stuff in there that no one even knows. I, I dare you to, uh, to get <laughs> a member you, of Congress so, to debate so what, can we do what to help biosimilarity you? means. What right? can we do to help you? <laughs> the, fir the first thing we can do to help us out right now is to demand that Congress uh, pass legislation that, that makes disclosure of lobbying uh, influence online and get it in real time uh, and, and we can start to have uh, we can start to fight back against this stuff. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, any other piece of legislation you're aware of right now where the lobbyists are writing the talking points and the legislative uh, aspects is, in addition to what you what you what the New York Times uncovered and what you've been covering with health care? Well, yeah, basically all of them. Uh, but, but I think the first thing that, that people ought to do is now take a look at this uh, biosimilar provision. This is something that gives uh, biotechnology companies 
effectively an infinite, nearly an infinite patent on drugs that can save people's lives, and that allows them to charge literally, in some cases, something like four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars per year for these drugs. And this provision is the only one that Democrats pulled word for word from the Republican alternative alternative health care bill. It was put in there by uh, Representative Anna Eshoo and, and has so far gotten through the House. This is a, a giveaway of tens of billions of dollars uh, to the pharmaceutical industry, and almost nobody's talking about it. So, so maybe this, this, uh, this idiocy will actually backfire on them, and people will look at this and say, well, why are we giving this, this tens of billions of dollars uh, to the pharmaceutical right. company here? Yeah, we'll, we'll wrap this up. The but problem it's is, too, Dylan, that it's too late right now. It's too late. For, it, it's too late for us to have an impact on the House bill. It's already happened. Ah, we need well, to have it before they, 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 they legislate all year, through. every year. Are you kidding me? They're going to be legislating yeah. until we're dead. It's never too late. Jake, we need thank it on you every bill. We need <laughs> it on every bill all the time. Uh, exactly. Jake, thank you very much. Ryan, a pleasure. Please keep us posted. We'll do what we can to help you.